Welcome to another episode of Punto How To, YouTube's semi-useful premium channel for looking after your Fiat Punto car. During the lockdown, I've been doing my best to keep you entertained with all of the videos that I haven't previously had time to edit. This week's video concerns this thing underneath the front bonnet of the car. Well, not so much the engine itself, but this little box of tricks here where all the sensors from the engine plug into. When you start the car normally, the engine warning lamp will come on to tell you that the lamp itself is working. Once you've started the car though, it should turn off with all the other warning lamps. In this particular instance, when we start the car, you'll notice that the engine warning light flicks off for a second and then comes back on again. And then a few more seconds pass and we get a check engine message on the dash. In this particular video, I've set this up. However, in this video, I am going to show you how to use the multi-scan software to reset any engine warning lights. First off, we're going to need to talk to that little box of tricks underneath the bonnet. And we do that by accessing the onboard diagnostic port. The port on a Fiat Punto is located behind this panel, just beside the steering wheel. It's not immediately obvious, but if you open this little tray and then pull, you'll gain access to the diagnostic port, which is just here. Now, that's all very well and good, but we're gonna to need to have something to plug into it. This is my little setup. You don't need anything flash. This is a Samsung NC10 netbook that I think I bought in around 2010. You can pick these up on eBay for sometimes as little as 20 quid. I have also got a set of interface cables and I have got an ELM327 interface, which you can buy off eBay for very little money. I think this one costs about £10, and it works with Bluetooth, so you don't even need to plug it in with cables. So I'm going to go out to the car. I'm going to plug this interface into the onboard diagnostics port in the car, and then I'm going to turn the ignition to the on position, and then turn our attentions to the laptop. Now, it's worth noting that every laptop has a slightly different process. This is an old Windows XP laptop, so what we have to do is go to the Bluetooth places on um, the Windows software, and we're going to connect to our onboard Diagnostic 2 interface, which is just here. It's showing as connected at the moment, and it's showing connected on COM5, which we need to make a note of for use in the software. So here is our Fiat multi-scan software. This is an older version, hence it's saying Fiat ECU scan still. We're going to go into settings. We're going to select interfaces. We're going to change the interface type to ELM327. And we're going to select COM port 5, which is what the software told us. And we hit test. And you don't need to know what all this means, but basically everything is coming back OK. So it's communicating properly with our little Bluetooth device. So next we select the car. So we've got a Fiat Punto. It is the 1.6 Multijet. And we're going to scan for all the modules, all the different diagnostic um, modules that the car has to, um, to, to interface with so that we can talk to them and read from them. This can take a couple of minutes. So what I'm going to do is just shorten the uh, process via the medium of video editing. And now the software has found all the modules that we can connect into, so all the various computers that are fitted in and around the car. And what we want to connect to is the engine ECU. So we're going to select engine. It's this Bosch EDC 16 C39. And it is now connecting to the car. Again, this takes just a moment. And when it does eventually connect, you'll get a screen that looks something like this. This is us now connected to the engine management computer on the car. And here's all the various bits and pieces that we can click on. So if we click on errors, these are all the error codes that the computer has picked up. So you can see there's quite a list there because I had unplugged something under the bonnet and it threw a bit of a fit. Um, you can see they're all intermittent faults rather than something that's there permanently. So. Next thing we need to do is we need to clear all these faults. Now it may seem pretty obvious, but if we click this button down here on the right that says clear errors, it will clear all the fault codes. You can also press F10, that does the same job. And that is all our fault codes gone. 
And now when we start the car, the uh, engine warning light immediately turns off and we have fixed our error warning light. If you have a newer version of the Multiscan software, here is a quick glance at that software running on a different laptop. Um, this is in simulated mode. As you can see, it all looks pretty much the same. The error messages are in the same place. The way you clear them is in the same place. So it doesn't matter if you have a newer version, it all works the same. So you might wonder what the point in this is. Well, once we take the car for a drive, we then plug it all back in again, connect the laptop up again, and we go back into the ECU software. The fault codes that we'd previously cleared could have been there for quite a long time. So by clearing them this time, we can then take the car for a drive and see if any new codes appear. When we went back into the ECU, as we did here, and we clicked on the errors tab, you will see that only one error now shows. So that is the only fault that exists on the car at the moment and the one we need to fix. Once we've fixed the fault, we can do the same again, clear the error codes, and then the car is fully cleared of any fault codes and hopefully all fixed and working properly. Once done, disconnect, back to the main menu, and then we can unplug all the plugs and put the car back together. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed that, consider giving us a thumbs up. Consider clicking subscribe as well if you're interested in these videos and you drive a Fit Punto car. If not, tune in anyway. We've got plenty of videos that might help you out with your car. And we will see you next time. If you're still here at the end of the video, there are some suggested videos on the left that YouTube thinks you might like. And the subscribe button should now be on the right hand side of your screen. So give it a click. We'll see you next time.